We're sitting here. You know, we talk a little Tennessee, talk some NFL, and guess who walks in? The man. Our, our good friend. The man. Sam Hartman. The legend. That's right. Former Sam Wake Hartman. Forest quarterback, now former Notre Dame quarterback, Sam Hartman. Thanks to Molly Middleton. I'll give a shout out to my girl, Molly. But Sam, number one, what is up? Number two, thanks for joining us. And number three, how's it going, man? How's life right now? It's going great. You know, I got a text from Molly, and I thought I was in trouble. So I'm glad I'm not in trouble. <laughs> yeah, typically that's go. a trouble yeah. text. Yeah, yeah. call me as soon as you get this. I was like, uh, what have I done in the past? <laughs> what I do, yeah. Since I've been here. So, yeah, no, it's been great. It's, uh, you know, obviously down here, weather's been incredible. Yeah. Um, obviously, the atmosphere is just unreal. This is a one-of-a-kind event. And then, you know, the guys in this in this on these teams around around the building it's people we've, i've been playing against since like six years ago and yeah every, every memory every moment they've all kind of been around for so you kind of get to rehash that and it's yeah. uh it's been going really well well man it's such an exciting time i i know in your life as well getting ready to, to take that next step ask a question in the chat we may get we may get to the chat to ask sam Harmon a question sam here's what i want to ask you we talked about this when you made the jump from wake to to notre dame you know playing in that we we call it the slow mesh RPO system that, that you kind of uh, did at Wake Forest, going to Notre Dame, more of that pro-style system. Uh, I know both obviously worked for you. You were asked to throw the ball a little bit more, it seemed like, at Wake Forest. Because, again, you're reading everything, every play. How, how was that jump going from one system to the other, especially being a, a – a, how do I say say a thrower of the ball, a nuanced thrower of the ball, a guy that can make all the throws, that understands what he's looking at, uh, looking at, but being in an offense where you can kind of utilize your strengths as a passer in more of a pro style system at that. Oh, makes. for sure, you should tell some NFL people that. I can yeah, <laughs> hey, look, I will. Um, They'll be no, here today. Uh, yeah, no, it was really cool. I think you know, first and foremost was Wake Forest and and what it meant to me to play there and yeah. um, really build a legacy there. And, and I have lifelong friends. I have best friends that I was roommates with that I played with for five years and you know one of them's getting married in two weeks like all those different things yeah like, um all the coaching the coaching staff the people the organization as a whole was incredible to me and um you know I'm so blessed that I got to experience that for five years and they kept me around for five years because all five weren't great the first two were really bad the second one was tough because of COVID and then the last two were pretty fun and um you know I made so many memories there and then you have the opportunity to go to the NFL. Try, hopefully, maybe I'd have came here and, and gave it a shot, but I just wouldn't have been ready. Yeah, um, like you're kind of talking about, it was one of those things. I had never been under center, you know. I'd never been in a huddle. I hadn't been able to call a play and, and, and look in the eyes of ten of the guys and say, "Hey, this is what we're running. This is what we're going to go do." I'm confident. You guys got to be confident. Let's go out and do it. And you had guys like Joe Walt, Blake Fisher, Audric Estime in there, and you got to, you got to almost relearn how to be a leader, relearn how to command an offense in a completely different way. Um, Wake was a lot more about plays and, and making plays, and Notre Dame became more about being able to manage the situation and then also make a play at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so um, I feel like a lot of that translates out on the field. Like to this morning when we go out there, it's not as much, hey, I got to go down, walk the dog, make a guy miss, make a throw. It's more, hey, I got to take a deep drop, feel the coverage, and potentially just get the ball to a guy and in the flat and he's going to go make 20 30 yeah. yards because that's what he's getting paid for now so yeah it seems like kind of i don't think buttoned up's the word but but kind of more robotic with the way you go about in the pro style offense and and before david i know i know you you want to ask him something but you know I, I don't think we talk about through the transfer portal or even making the jump from college to the nfl or high school to college it is that leading element you know we look in the transfer portal and we're like hey this amazing wide receiver is going from place A to place B. He's an incredible player. Or this quarterback's a really good player. We know what he can do on the field. But it's that leadership aspect that I don't think enough – talk about fit. We hear that word all the time. Can you just talk about – and you did a little bit – just about having to go in there and once again set the tone of saying, hey, I'm not trying to come in here like an, an arrogant prick, but I want to be your leader and I've got to prove, prove it to you how I can lead. No, for sure. I mean, I think – um, you know, the humble flex of the day is being a captain for three years at Wake, you learn a lot. And, and Coach Clawson taught me so much at Wake about how to be a leader, but also how to be a little bit more self-aware of everything that you do and everything that goes into everything you say. Um, I think when I was younger as a captain, I gave 50 speeches and all of them, probably the first 10 were listened to, the last 40 nobody yeah. cared about. Because you're talking too much, you're doing too much. and. Um, as my career went on, the speeches got less, but it was more about the interpersonal relationships and, For sure. and my self-awareness to know, okay, this action or this 
Um, you know, this talk or the way I say this to this person maybe comes across a little bit different than the other person. And then get into Notre Dame, like you said, it was not, I'm not going to kick the door down, but I got to get my foot in the door. For sure. Um, and, and the guys in the locker room made that all happen so easily. Like there's, you know, four other guys here with me. Um, and it obviously speaks to the Notre Dame talent level and, and the character of those guys. And, um, you know, they helped me, you know, seamlessly transition into this organization that has had a history and tradition of winning and unbelievable leaders and um, in a very high pressure situation, which I'm always, you know, super grateful for. For sure. Tony? Can Sam hear me? Sam, can you hear me? You hear him, Sam? Yes. Pim Pendango, can you hear me? There was a there was a time when a quarterback got drafted to the NFL that he had the luxury to sit behind another starter and really develop. Now it seems like guys are having to start for NFL franchises right off the bat. Just this past year, you look at Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud, Aiden O'Connell, Sam Howell, all these guys having to start um, you know, as rookies. You and Bo Nix and Michael Penix Jr., you guys have more college snaps than almost any quarterback coming out that I can remember. What part Part of your game and that experience can translate the quickest to the NFL if you find yourself in a situation having to start as a rookie? Um, I mean, I think the biggest thing you see, especially at the quarterback position, is just, uh, you know, there's a huge high-low variation. And um, each game is going to be a mix of that. And each week and each season is going to be a mix of that. And I think um, especially at the, the NFL level, the scrutiny and the criticisms that you get day in and day out um, amplify that much more than when you were in college. Uh, so I think that the level headedness and the real, realization that one play, one, one snap, one drive is not going to make or break the, the career, but also at the same time, you realize how important it all is. So um, it's a fine balance of that kind of, uh, you know, paradox where one play is it's not the end of the world, but it also could be the end of the world. And so, <laughs> Um, it's just finding that, that happy medium and, and rolling with the punches. Well, we, uh, we all had a lot of fun watching you play, man, so we're wishing you the best of luck. And I have to tell you, we do a segment on this show called Huddle Up where we break down the biggest touchdown from the weekend before, and your, your week zero touchdown on short double post was the first Huddle Up segment hey. of, the, of yeah. the year this past season. How about that? Little du- the Irish in Dublin. The Irish in Dublin. The Irish in Dublin. Yeah, you guys yeah. I see it, it all we, makes it. We called it, we called it <laughs> Python. We called it Python for short double post, but it was a heck of a throw, man. Yeah, as a DB coach, we called it "oh shit." That's what we yeah. called it. <laughs> yeah. Sam, how was it playing over in Dublin, man? It was it was unreal. Um, you know, probably the three coolest moments was the support was one, yeah. um, the amount of Irish fans. Obviously, we were in the Irish country, and and just the hospitality. The whole event was just first class. We were staying in like a five star hotel on the hillside. You could look out and see just pasture lands full of bagger vans. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. Some there was like a flute in the background when you walked around. It was crazy. <laughs> Um, and then I would say number two was meeting Joe Montana. Um, yeah. He was on the sideline walking around. I got to shake his hand. That's obviously a lifelong, you know, idol and dream. And number three was meeting Shane Gillis. Um, he's, nice. uh, he's, a, nice. he's an Irish legend and he loves, he loves Notre Dame and, and the Notre Dame loves him back. And so uh, it, was a, it was quite a star-studded cast. And then I would say to piggyback on that was the Ohio State game. Obviously didn't go the way we went, but mm-hmm. we wanted it to. But um, again, got, got a lot of time with Joe Montana. And then I, Vince Vaughn was on the sideline. Which yeah, again, see that. Unreal, unreal. Everybody was out. Comedy there. legend and, and somebody who I can, you know, I can former former Notre Dame quarterback yeah, too, exactly. and, and Rudy so, technically so we had some, part of the brotherhood. Yeah, we were, we had some good good talks. You feel like you're in a movie when you're talking to him. It's so yeah. cool. So yeah, well, one couple more questions. Um, how's the Senior Bowl been so far? Has anything stood out uh, to you personally? And the next question is, how do I get my hair? To yeah. look like yours, dude. Yeah, it's a little rough right now. I didn't, I didn't really get in a, a good shower. I was, I was rolling through. Hey, this give us morning. a man. It's, How many times has head and shoulders? Anybody else got a chance? NFL already. Be hanging out with Troy Polamalu. <laughs> hey, that's good company, right? Uh, Senior Bowl's been great. I, uh, you know, it's just cool. Like I think one of the the reasons I I love I love this game and I've been trying to play it and stay in college and do all the things that I've done for so long is because of the guys in it. And um, you know, I, you have know, no reason or or rhyme to be around these cats and and know these guys and um there's not a lot of commonalities just on on paper with a lot of these my teammates and the team the guys on the other team but we love football and it it grows this bond that is undescribable and unfathomable and the world today and 
Um, I, it's surreal, and it's it's something I have to pinch myself every morning. I get to wake up and walk around and, and mm -hmm. play with these guys. And then I just say the event itself is so first class. You know, um, Jim Nagy does an incredible job. For just sure. you know, one inviting the right people and getting the right people around us to be coached, and um, the NFL and the NFLPA and everyone around it really just helps us feel like, yeah, it's a lot. You're you got interviews. Like our, my day is just getting started, and um, this is the easiest part of my day. So yeah. I appreciate that. I'm not thinking about football or the interviews after how I'm walking if I look like I'm presenting myself. <laughs> well, right? um, so, th so that's been great. And, and the hair, I got to give a shout out to mom. She, she's there yeah. you go. Yeah, there you go. She blessed me. And so hopefully this thing stays like this for a little bit longer, but I'm sure somebody will tell me to cut it here soon. Hey, well, uh, you get, you yeah, let's go to John Williams real quick in the chat. He wants to know, Sam, what do you think will be the most difficult adjustment as a QB transitioning from college? to the NFL? Um, I think it was the same. It was similar, not saying the college NFL was the same, but a similar transition was up front, um, the speed, right? You get in the, in the high school, you, you, D line is at a premium in high school. College, it becomes, okay, you're playing one or two guys that are really good. The NFL, yeah. every single one, and then you get the guy, then you get that dude who's, you're basically sliding everything too. So yeah. um, I think that's one of the biggest ones is how quickly you have to get the ball out. There's no three seconds in the pockets. It's two yeah. and a half. It's one. It's I got to get I got to know, hey, this guy's open. No, check it down. Hey, this guy's no, check it down. This guy, I got to get out. So I think that's one of the biggest things I've heard. And obviously, I'm sure I'll experience some more along the way. Well, that's how I always say, like watching guys extend the play at, at, in the NFL level at the quarterback position, making those D linemen miss is so impressive. Like when Mahomes does it in his weird way, it's it's incredible. Those guys are great athletes. But Sam, Man, good luck to you. We're going to be yes, rooting sir. for you, brother. Appreciate Thanks you guys. for taking some time with us this morning. Yeah, congrats on a great career. Yes, Thanks, David, Sam. there's a handshake. Right there. That's, that's, a, that's an there. awesome yeah. virtual yeah. handshake right there. Yeah. I love it. That yeah. is right there. Yeah. Well, look, it's 2024. Elon will be proud. Hey, YouTube, what's up? It's a road game for us, but it's never a road game for you. So hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Turn that notification bell on and ring it like Quasimodo, except we all know you're a lot better looking.